Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. The show is about transforming lives one story at a time. And we invite people from all walks of life to come and share their heart stories, stories of transformation, of upliftment. And we're very excited to uh, invite another wonderful individual on the line. Angela J. Carter is the Executive Director of Roots Community Services. And Angela's quest is to help others. And she's done so throughout her professional work life, as well as volunteering with various organizations. Angela is also a journalist and communicator by profession. And she has a strong interest in intercultural relations, cultural humility, and communication for social change. Please welcome Angela. How are you doing today? Oh, I have mixed feelings. And thank you very much, Nikki, for having me on the show. And, you know, with all that's going on right now, there's, um, you know, upheaval of feelings, as you would say. And uh, so I am going between some ebbs and flows right right now. But Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I have faith and I'm hopeful. Excellent. Thank you. And (laughs) faith is very important. So, Angela, uh, you have uh, such a stellar, um, you know, a stellar uh, resume of all the things that you've done. You're very accomplished, but maybe people don't know the story behind the story. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about your background leading up to where you are today. Okay, thank you. Oh gosh, you you would need so much to, for me to talk about all about me, tell you, <laughs> but uh, I'll condense <laughs> it. As you mentioned, uh, um, my my background really is in journalism and, and communication. I am from Barbados, a very tiny island in the Caribbean, for those who may not know. And I came to uh, Canada in 1989 with two young girls, a single mom, two young girls. And, uh, uh, but, be, but I was a journalist back in Barbados, and that's where I really found my passion for really helping others and for uh, my understanding others and really wanting to learn about other cultures and really get immersed in, immersed in, in, um, in what makes people think and why people do things the way they do. So I have a very, very inquisitive mind, um, which is gr- great for journalism. <clears throat> Sorry. And uh, so I, um, when I came here, I actually worked for Share Newspaper for a short while but then I went to, uh, into banking, um, and I was in banking for 13 years, primarily in communications. Uh, but most of the time I was there, I was volunteering. Uh, I had stayed on with Share to do freelance work because I, as I said, I really like to learn about other people and other cultures. And I was volunteering all along while I was uh, at. Um, at the financial institution. So I, I, I volunteer with a number of organizations. Um, Telecare Distress Center was one, United Way was United Way of Peel then. I was um, a member of the International Association of Business Communicators. I was a member of the uh, Association for Fundraising Professionals <coughs> and, and the United Achievers Club. <coughs> Sorry. I, was, I joined the United Achievers Club back in uh, probably 1991 and uh, um, was with them for probably a decade. And, and that's where I did a lot of work. We, back then, we did a lot of work with the youth and seniors and women. And I, I spent a lot of time with the youth back then, for sure. So I, as I said, I always in, enjoyed that. I, I, I enjoyed working with people and really helping people to achieve a quality, I always say a quality of life that is meaningful to them because everybody has their own idea of what the quality of the quality of life they want and I don't think it should be prescribed by someone else. So I I really try to help people to just lift themselves up and get, um, enjoy their life and, and, and be passionate about something in life. I'm also very involved with my church I have been involved in my church for many years, at Central Park Baptist Church in, in Brampton, and now I, I'm still involved. I'm a trustee there. So that's a lot of my background. I, I, I went to um, this passion for, for learning about others as well. I've traveled quite a bit, especially with the media. But here, one of the things I also did when I was here, I went to India for three months um, to Punjab, 
and and I worked with the pretty work. I did some service, I should say, with a Christian school and and uh, doing business communications. And I also did some work with a um, a Christian hospital that was there. And that was a very um, eye opening. Um, wonderful experience to be able to to go there my i wanted to go to africa but it didn't i wasn't able to go but the 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 the, um opportunity to go to india presented itself and i really took it and i'm so glad i did so my i still need to get to africa sometime i want to go to a few Mm -hmm. countries in africa as well so i'm hoping that i can accomplish that in in the next couple of years hopefully so uh yeah, I have a, my, my bachelor, a bachelor's degree in liberal studies, and I did my master's in international and intercultural communications. So that is uh, my background to some extent. As I said, I have two wonderful daughters and four grandsons, so, uh, and, and a little uh, great-granddaughter. So that's, that's me. <laughs> Fantastic. So, Angela, let's talk about um, Ruth Community Center uh, and the services, rather. Tell us a little bit about the programs that you offer and uh, who is involved and who are you um, targeting, who's gravitating to the services. Okay. Uh, yeah, Roots Community Services, we were United Achievers Community Services, and last year we changed our name to Roots Community Services as we look to, you know, you always have to refresh your organization and we restructured and we look to move on, look into the future. And we focus primarily on the black African and Caribbean communities. We welcome anyone who comes to, to our doors, and we do have from various uh, uh, ethnic groups, but our focus is on the black African and Caribbean communities because we, we focus on really delivering culturally appropriate uh, services to our, 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 um, to our members and clients. So we, are, we have programs that run from a, uh, age six to seniors. So uh, we have after school program during the school year and we do have a summer camp, which is gonna look very different this year. So we are um we've had to because of COVID nineteen, we've had to um readjust how we uh, deliver our programs to our, our clients and, mm-hmm. and we will be we are modifying our our, our summer camp. Uh so yeah, so we, we and, and our, our the way we, we want to really offer and we, we offer our programs really is to, uh, to help, help um, our clients, the individuals, think, do critical thinking, go beyond where, what they normally would do and think about themselves, be happy about themselves, learn about themselves, learn about their, 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 really learn about their families, not just, oh, this is my mom, this is my dad, this is my sister, my brother, but to find out, okay, why do they do the things they do? What makes them sick? Um, uh, pick, you know, what is it that, uh, why do I feel the way I feel? Why do I gravitate right. to certain things? So if we can get kids starting at a very young age to start thinking critically, I think it helps them as they grow to be mm-hmm. even, uh, and, and not to be accepting of everything that's passing them, but really be confident in themselves because they know mm-hmm. who they are. They know why they're doing things. So when mm-hmm. they're like that, they're confident and no one can really strip away that, um, their identity then. Because a lot mm-hmm. of our youth, uh, we find uh, there, there's loss. They don't. They have this um, lack. Of, uh, they lack that sense of belonging, mm-hmm. and it's because they're not grounded. Because when you're grounded, no matter where you are placed, you you will feel you know who you are, and you can right. very much adapt uh, to what is happening around you. So that's what we try to instill within our youth and our children and youth. So we have, as I said, we have that uh, uh, the the after school we call it the alt program arts literacy and tutoring so we do Mm -hmm. one-on-one tutoring but we do group sessions we have the the summer camp we started Mm -hmm. this year the uh, modern batik art but we started it and then it was closed because of covid uh, and we're looking at how we can restart that but that Mm -hmm. is teaching again youth to to express themselves through art and and that was that is something because we we always believe that there, there's an outlet. How can you best express yourself? Is it music? Is it art? Is it storytelling? Is it writing? Whatever. 
whatever way that you can help youth to express themselves. And then we also have a youth outreach worker program, and that program is uh, that is that came through the Ontario Black Youth Action Plan, which was uh, um, introduced in 2018. That program um, is to help to provide clinical intervention to youth who are having difficulty coping with, you know, and struggling with things. That could be school, it could be um, relationships, mental health, addiction. And so whatever, you know, we're there to help them and to help to um, refer them to services that, that can provide them with that kind of a wraparound. So if we find that they need help in tutoring, we would try to, you know, arrange for them to get, to get that service. Right. If they need help from for addiction services, we will work with them to get that. So we, we help, we talk to them, and we work with them to try to help to, to, to refer them to services that they can get further help. We also have a youth entrepreneurship mentoring program, and that's a program that's really dear to my heart because I really believe that if we can, and it's called Black, Le- Black Leaders of Tomorrow, if we can develop really strong leaders of tomorrow in business, right, we really can we really help to grow that um, Black business group that we're, we're lacking so much here. You know, there's small business, small Black businesses, but we don't have a lot of large Black businesses, and we want to instill from a very young age that, uh, that um the business acumen, how to be successful in running a business. Uh, even if they don't continue being an entrepreneur, if they go into another uh, uh, um, corporate, uh, corporation, they know what is expected, uh, how to lead a business. So that is a, a program for ages 16 to 24. And again, that's a program from through the Ontario Black Youth Action Plan. We also are working with um, a part of a, uh, a collaborative here within Peel, where we, it's called the Black Youth School Success Initiative, and it's with the United Way of Greater Toronto, the Black Advisory Committee there. We work uh-huh. with the Peel District School Board and, and with the Catholic District School Board and some other small, um, some other um, black agencies, and we're delivering, again, tutoring and recreation in different um, uh, services to youth in the schools as well. The, ob- the objective is to get them to graduate. We want to have them on, on track to graduate uh, from school because that was an area that we found through research was happening. A lot of youth were dropping out of, of high school and were not graduating. So that program is for that. We also have a, well, a mental wellness program. This is a psycho um, where we have a psychotherapist that will work with uh, youth, um, youth and their families that are really struggling with deep, deep, deep issues. So that program is also there that we have for, 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 for our, our community as well. We, we have a Balance Against Women program for women who are in abusive situations. And we are, right now we are looking for funding to, get to, uh, to run a program for men who may, who may be, who, we don't, I don't want to call men who are abusers, but men who may be in these abusive situations and want to get help to, to stop the abuse. Because we're helping the women and giving them the tools to help them to, uh, to gain their confidence and to be able to stand up and stuff. But then they're not working with the men and we say they're being left out. So we want to start a program for them to help them to see what, what is it that is causing that, uh, the, the, the problems within their relationships. Many of them may not even think that what they're doing is causing that a problem. So to help them to see and understand and, and really work through that as well. And then we have a program with the Peel, the Peel um, Children's Aid Society. We have two programs with them right now. We have a counseling program where we counsel parents whose children are involved with the society. And we also have another program, it's called ACOMA. It's where we work with youth and try and do a wraparound with them and their families as well. So we, those are two programs we have with the Peel uh, Children's Aid Society. And then early uh, in January, we started, in December it was, we started a program with Halton Children's Aid Society as well, providing, again, services to parents and, and youth who's, who are involved with that society. This, the reason for this is because there's a higher proportion of black youth 
in the societies, in the CASs. And for some, we, well, we know a lot of the reasons. It would take a long time to discuss all of that right now. But right. there, there, there is a. We, we know the issues. The the higher rates of of, of referrals from the schools, from the police, mm-hmm. and 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 there are a number of issues that are causing uh, more of our kids to be referred to the to the societies. So right. our objective working with them is to reduce that the length of time they are there and try to prevent them from going in in the first place. So Absolutely. those are those are things with yeah, and then. We have the seniors program where we have over 300 seniors in our, uh, as members ranging from very, very active that do Zumba and yoga and things like that to those who may be uh, in nursing homes that we would go and visit and run light errands for. So that's a very active group. So, so although we find that they, they have adapted pretty okay to the to having to do online online programs, they miss that mm-hmm. get, getting together because they would get together um, at least weekly and stuff and do things together and go on picnics in the summer and go on tours and go to St. Jacob's and do different things. And, and they've been kind of cloistered for now for the last three months. It is it's, it's, it's almost three months now. And um, you know, March, April, May, June, my goodness, three months we've been cloistered. And uh, so, they, so some of the things they're doing is going on a virtual vacation and doing different things like that, right, devotions and stuff online. So right. they, yeah, so there's a lot of things they're trying to do, having to move all our programs online. But those are, you know, things we do. And as I said, under all of these is to help them to have, ha- enjoy their life. Right, that's the whole thing. You, you you can't go through life feeling down and miserable and stuff. So whatever we can do to bring joy and happiness and and help them to be to feel good. And actually, we published this year. It was released this year. We, we launched it a book on from on the seniors. So we it's a book of about thirty eight um, seniors, and it's called Our Lives Our Heritage. And they're telling their stories in this book. So the uh, thirty eight seniors that uh, are featured in the book. And really tell you how they came here and the work they did and what they what they did to overcome some of the barriers they faced, but how they they did that and are, and now live in a life that they enjoy. So that is a good book that you should get and probably sometime feature some of them. They've got a really lovely stories when you look and see what they have done and to the help in the development of Canada as well. So. Absolutely. Yeah. So those are a number of programs we are running, and we're always collaborating with other agencies mm-hmm. as well to run mm-hmm. programs throughout the throughout the um the region right and and how can people connect with you about volunteering or donating oh we have a website our website is www.rootscs and that is r o o t s c s dot org o r g so go to that website you see um a lot of information on us but here you can also contact me at angela at roots cs.org, A-N-G-E-L-A, at roots, C-S, R-O-O-T-S, C-S, dot org. They can contact me at that uh, as well. Or um, my phone number is 416-433-1378, and I will be able to talk to them and uh, refer them to the various departments uh, that they can go to, to if, in, in, if they want more information. Excellent. Angela, thank you so much for uh, sharing a little bit about uh, your personal story and about the wonderful work you're doing in the community in Brampton and beyond. Uh, So thank you very much for that. And um, do you have, uh, as we conclude, a message for those who are, you know, grappling with a day-to-day experience of, um, you know, the challenges of COVID-19? What message of hope would you give us? Message, message, message of hope. Well, right now, um, especially if you're in the black community, you have, we call it two pandemics, so the COVID-19 mm-hmm. as well as the racism, the anti-black racism we are facing right now. So we know that your emotions are probably very raw. You're going through probably a tough time. Uh, um, and especially if you've either lost your job or even if you have a job and on the front line, the uh, anxiety you feel and stuff. But one thing we said, you know, um, have faith. We are, while we are not a, 
a, um, designated a Christian or faith-based organization, many of our um, many of our, our counselors and our staff uh, 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 um, have Christian values. So we do operate with Christian values, and we believe in faith. And you have faith that you know, we one day at a time, we will get through it. Uh, surround yourself if you can find some support, some measure of support, whether it's you, if your church, your church group, if you go to church, or a pastor, or is, are there colleagues or your sibling, but just find somebody. Are some people may be able to do it from within. They can do it within themselves, but doing your own devotions, reading uh, um, something that is meaningful to you, but, but just find something that can give you um, that hope and, and I have that faith in that we can make it through. And obviously you follow the, the directives of the public health um, officials. Keep to wash your hands, you know, the, the things they say, but just have faith that you can make it through and, and just hold on to that and just think that, uh, you know, um, if when we're in the valley, we're not usually walking to the valley alone and that we, right. we can really depend on someone Someone is out there to help. As that song, I believe, someone is there. They'll come to show the way. Yeah, just have that faith that someone will come to show the way. And I'm sure when you know, you will make it one day at a time. Excellent, Angela Carter, uh, Executive Director of Roots Community Services. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it, and I commend you and all the work uh, that you're doing to um, bring people together. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Nikki. I, again, thanks for this opportunity. Thank you. And God oh, bless. It's a pleasure. God bless you too. Stay safe, stay strong, and see you, you on the other you. side. Okay, Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.